hoping that the doctor will prescribe for us something which will cure our illness. We have to have behind it that it is, ab- it is really Allah who is curing us through the instrument of this doctor. Not that the doctor really cures us. Because if we believe that the doctor actually cures us and Allah is not in the picture, then shirk has roots in our beliefs. It has roots in our belief. So that tawheed of Islam is a unique tawheed which has no room for compromise and we have to be careful to raise our children with this understanding so we don't due to our contact with non-Muslims or growing up in a mixed society whatever make statements like after I'm gonna go do this knock on wood we don't do that we don't keep our fingers crossed all of this even though it's we don't mean anything by it but its roots are in paganism its roots are in paganism knocking on wood came from the Scandinavian belief in the tree gods. They believe that the gods dwelt in the trees. They existed in the trees. So when you wanted to worship God, you would come up to the tree and you would knock on the tree. Then you addressed God. This is where it came from. So we can't have that as amongst our habits, our customs. If our children bring it back from school, we have to stop it, nip it in the bud, explain to them, no, as Muslims we don't do that. We remove from them any fear that they may have about omens. Number 13. When you book a flight, whether on Qatar Airways or Emirates, row 13 is not a choice. You can get on 12, you can get on 14, but there is no row 13. So, we have to let our children know this is nonsense, this is superstition, this is not our belief. We don't have any fears about numbers. So, as Muslims, our fear should ultimately be fear of Allah. Fear of what? Allah's displeasure. Fear of Allah's punishment. But the foundation of our relationship should be the love of Allah. But when we love someone dearly, we fear their displeasure. So we have that same combination. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما Allah told us that because Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم exemplified for us in his life the worship of Allah the love of Allah the fear of Allah's displeasure the gratitude of for Allah's gifts he was the example for us. 
So we need to be in touch with the life of the Prophet Our children should be in touch with the life of the Prophet They should know the details of his life and how those details are relevant to them very important not just to memorize the facts when he was born what happened about his parents dying and this and we give them all the facts no link those facts to their lives they should know Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as an example which Allah made him لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا there is in the Messenger of Allah for you a good example. But if you don't know his life, you don't know the significance of the incidents of his life to our life, this relevance, then how can he be that example? So, brothers and sisters, let us not forget our responsibility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship him as he deserves to be worshipped. To worship him on the basis of Tawheed. To know what Tawheed is and what it isn't. <coughs> to be clear on it. Why? Because there are some people who will tell you Tawheed means to know that we are Allah. One, Allah. We really don't exist. We are Allah. It's all one. No, 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 no. That's not Tawheed. That may be Tawheed in your mind. But that wasn't the Tawheed which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, brought. That's not the Tawheed of the Quran. The Tawheed of the Qur'an is that there is only one creator and there is only one creation. All of that creation is the product of that creator. The creator and the creation are not the same thing. The creation worships the Creator. If we and the Creator were one and the same, then it is okay for us to worship ourselves or to worship other bits and pieces of creation like idols, human beings, etc, etc. But all of that is forbidden. So we should know what is Tawheed. And we should know what it is not. We should take the example of the Prophet ﷺ as the guide for us in living lives according to Tawheed. I ask Allah SWT to renew our understanding of Tawheed, to bring us back to the true Tawheed which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, brought. I ask Allah to make it that central pillar in our lives that it should be. I ask Allah to make all of our actions comply with Tawheed. And I ask Allah to allow us to die on Tawheed. Aqimus Salah. <laughs>